Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the random process. Today we will discuss about the mean auto correlations and the auto covariance. Myself Dr. Gurk working in the School of Mathematics Thapar Institute India. So what we have discussed so far is we if you have a random experiment with the sample space S then it's said to be a random process when you assign a parameter t corresponding to the each of these outcome and it is denoted as x of t where t is here it, this process is called as the random process if you fix if if you consider time as a constant if you fix as a value of the t then this random process is nothing but the random variable and if you fix the parameter s then this random process is the function of the time t however if you fix the t and s both then it is nothing but the real number now once you are defining the random process that is x of t then how you can find the mean auto covariance and the auto correlation first of all if you have a fixed value of the t then as we discussed in the last slide that x of t is a random variable now once it is a random variable then you can define the mean you can easily define the variance correlation covariance and many more are things so then the mean of this random process x of t for the fixed value of t is defined like here this is the function of the time and it's called as the zamblings average on the other hand if you consider the two time periods there is a t1 and t2 and then these two are called as the random variable the corresponding function that is r of x is called as the correlation between them you can clearly see that if you look about that you can clearly see this is a symmetric why because you can see t1 and t2 is nothing but my t2 of t1 so you can see this the symmetric properties there what is the meaning of the r x axis this is called as the auto correlation or simply called as the correlation functions of the random process x t as the name suggests is a correlation so it measures the degree of the dependencies amongst the random variable based on this correlation we can define the covariance as we know how we can define the covariance between the random variable it is nothing but my expected value of this minus of here the same thing we can define for the two random variable x1 and x2 this is nothing but my uh, covariance of x of t1 and x of t2 so which is defined like here or you can also write like of x minus x bar and y minus y bar so you can see this is the mean of the first variable and the second are there and when you open this bracket you can see this is the x x of x is nothing but r here clearly again see that the c of this again be a symmetric is there so you can see this is again be a here also you can see if any of the value either of this zero or this are zero if any of these value zero then the c and r both have the same terms how you can define the variance from the covariance we all knows that how you can define if you have the covariance are there if you take x is equal to y then this covariance is nothing but my variance so the same way we have if you substitute t1 and t2 both are the same then we will call as the variance of this once you know the covariance once you know the variance you can define the correlation that is nothing but my of this now how you can solve the illustrative examples are there so you have to find the mean correlation covariance and the variance of this so what is given to you that a and the theta are my independent and the uniform random variable so you all knows that what is the pdf of the uniform this is here so can you define the pdf of the a as well as pdf of this parameter over the domain minus k to k and from pi to pi that is 1 upon b minus a once you know this can you find the mean and the variance of this you can easily find the mean is my zero over this a and over this r here and so on. now you have to find the mean of the x what is the axis x is defined like this way so we can start with the mean of this here what is given to you a and theta are my independent so we all knows that whenever x and y are independent you can write this quantity as of this form so i can write this value as here what is the e of a e of a is my zero so you can see when you multiply them it becomes my zero is so that's the answer of this mean 
how you find the correlation so you can see the correlation is that so the correlation is denoted by r is there we can substitute the value of the x of t1 and x of t2 by using here so once you substitute you will get this again a and theta are my independent so you can write like here how you can find the value of the e of a square you know that variance is given to you by here from here you can find the values of this e of a square so from here this is my zero so this is nothing but k square by 3 is there now how you can find this value so all knows that how you can do that so since you can multiply and divide it by here how you can do that so we all knows that this is x into f of x so now here t1 and t2 are the fixed parameter so this is varies with respect to the theta so this is nothing but my f of theta so the limits are from minus pi to plus pi how you can integrate these two function you can multiply and divide by 2 and use this formula of that 2 cos a cos b is nothing but my here now how you can integrate that so this is integration with respect to theta so what is the integration of this part this is nothing but my sin since this is my constant with respect to theta this is my here now you can take the limits from minus pi to plus pi so what is the sign of you can see this is a x plus of 2 pi what is the sign of 2 pi plus x it lies in the first quadrant this is my here when you take minus of this so what is that this is x minus of 2 pi this is nothing but minus sin of x so this is my x so you can substitute this value here you can see this will be cancel out so it will be twice of pi so it will be cancel this is the required auto correlation function of this how you define them now you can substitute this value here this value is k square by 3 you can substitute this is the right as how you find the covariance so we all knows that covariance is nothing but my r of mean so we we already calculated that the mean values are my zero so this value already calculated as a zero this value is given by here so you can substitute this value is the required as how you find the variance from the covariance so when you take t1 and t2 both are same then it is nothing but my variance so if i consider this as same so this value is my zero cos of zero is my 1 so it is k square by 6 is the right look at the next example are there so consider a random process where b and phi are independent with the mean 0 and 1 so this is given to you mean and here phi is given to you the uniformly distribution so again by using the same we can compute the uh, pdf of the phi and here you have to find the mean and the correlation we can start from the mean we can substitute the value of the phi here and b and phi both are my independent so i can take it separate e of b is nothing but my what is our e of b e of b is nothing but my zero so the answer is my zero how you find the correlation so we can start with the here correlation is nothing but this value uh, sorry this is the covariance this is the covariance how you if you want to correlation so there is no need of this so this is my correlation you can substitute this value as of here now b and phi are independent so you can take this phi here what is the e of b square we can find the values from the variance e of b square is nothing but my 1 how you find this value you can multiply and divide it by 2 on the both side again by using this identity you can multiply and divide by 2 here again now you have to integrate this with respect to phi what is the value of the f of phi this is nothing but 1 by 2 pi is given to you so this 1 upon 2 phi is my here you can integrate this with respect to phi this is constant so it is written as here you can substitute this value again it will be cancel out this will be here you can substitute this value here you will get the required as look at the another one is there so the auto correlation function is given to you you have to find the mean variance and so on of this z and w that's a very simple are there what is given to you that is a mean is given to be 3 and it is independent of that t so it's a constant for here how you can find the mean of the z and this so your target is to be here what is the value of the z is x of 5 so can you find the value of the x of 5 so what is that e of x5 that is the mean of this so the mean of this at 3 is nothing but my 3 this is again be a same so the answer of both are my 3 are here similarly for here this is my how you find the variance so again 
firstly we can find the covariance and how you can find the variance we can take z as a w then it will be a variance how you can do that you can start with the definition of this r of this what is the value of the z is x of 8 and this we can substitute this value this value is my 3 this is also be the 3 so it's my 9 how you do that so this value i can do by using of here what is the value of the t1 and t2 so for the z what is the value of the z this is my t1 this is my t2 so i can substitute this value here we will get this right answer how you can find the variance so we all know that how you can find that we can take z is equal to w here so this value is nothing but my this and this value is my here so i can take this value as of here this is my z is nothing but 5 so 5 comma 5 and this this value is 3 this value is 3 5 comma 5 i can substitute here this is my 0 e raised power 0 is 1 this is 9 plus 4 and here similarly we can find this value which is again come to be look at the another value are there so x of t is a random process a and b are my independent normally distribution are there find the covariance so again a and b are given to you normally distribution so the mean is given to you variance are given to you also given to you a and b are my independent what is the meaning of the independent so it means what is the meaning of their product product is nothing but my air once you know the variance are there you can easily find the value of the e of this now you can apply the covariance piece. so what is the covariance is my here so this value is my zero this value is also be zero so covariance is nothing but my e of xx so i can substitute this value can you find the value of this so you can see this value is my zero this value is my zero so this is my here similarly we can find this value as also be a zero we can take this value so we can substitute the value of the x1 and x2 here so this is nothing but when you take the value of this and this and multiply you will get here since this value is my constant which can be taken outside which can be written like here what is the value of the e of a b what is the value of the e of a b is my zero here can you find the value of the e of a square yes you can do that by, by using the variance this is a sigma square so we can take the sigma square outside what is that this is a cos a cos b plus sin a sin b is nothing but my here so the required answer is my this look at the one more example are there so again it is given to you small a and small b are independent having mean and variances are given theta is my constant you have to find the mean variance and the correlation these are given to you from these two you can find the value of the e of a square and e of b square how because you know that variance of the a is nothing but my this form now what is given to you a and b are independent so again we can find their expected value as here how you can find the mean so you can find the mean of this can you find the mean of this again we can start from here we can substitute this value of here what is given to you a and b are independent so this is my constant which is given to you so cos of this is my outside this is e of a this is sin is outside which is e of b e of a and e of b are given to you zero so the answer is my zero how you can find the variance variance is nothing but the e of x square minus of e of here otherwise you can find the covariance firstly and then take t1 and t2 same how you find the e of x square so this is my x so how you can find this this is whole square this value is my zero so if you take a plus b whole square this is here now again cos is my constant which is outside so e of a square plus 2 cos a 2 is outside cos is outside sin is outside and this is e of a b plus sin square is outside e of b square now you can see that this value is my zero this value is my sigma square this value is my sigma square so you can do it and once you take sigma square common sin square plus cos square is my one is the required variance how you find the correlation so how you find the correlation you can start with the here this is my here you can substitute x1 and x2 you can multiply them here again this part is my constant which is taken outside e of a square we all know that 
e of a b is 0 e of b is 0 this value is sigma square once you take sigma square common this value is nothing but my here you can do it uh, you can see this is similar as that of the previous one you can do it yourself let me know the answer in comment box you can see another example is there you have to find the cdf of this random variable find the mean and their correlation again that's a very simple what is given to you t is my uniform random variable so once it is given to be here t is my uniform distribution so what is the pdf of the uniform distribution so this is 1 upon b minus a so that is 1 upon 1 what is the cdf of this this is nothing but my t minus a upon b minus a that is my tr so this is my cdf now your target is to find the cdf of this so this is your target how you can do that you can substitute the value of the x of t here now i can find the value of this now i can compare this value what is that this is nothing but my small t so i can substitute here all these values which is my here can you find the value of the x from the first part which is nothing but my t minus 1 can you find the value of the second part third part you will get this expression now can you observe that what is that this is nothing but my cdf of the random process how you can find the expected value we all know that for the expected value we need the integration so for this we need the pdf so this is my pdf how you can find the pdf is derivative of their cdf that is my here now you can find the pdf or you can see this is nothing but my uniform distribution why because uniform distribution is 1 upon b minus a what is that this is my a this is my b what is the 1 upon b minus a is 1 so it means this x of t follows the uniform distribution over the domain 1 minus t and 2 minus t so once you know this one so what is the mean of the uniform distribution a plus b upon 2 so that is a plus this is my a this is my b upon 2 is the required answer how you find the correlation so there is a c are there so you can start with the here so you can see it from the firstly you can find the correlation here and then you can find this value as of mean and mean are there so we can firstly start with the rxx that is x1 and x2 if you multiply them you can multiply like here so since this is my uniform you can open this bracket what is the e of t square you all know that t is my uniform you can calculate the e of t square this is my 1 by 2 and so on so after the calculation you will get the required answer based on this you can find the correlation if you want you can see x minus e of x1 e of x of t2 you can substitute this value here the mean we already computed in the previous part this you can substitute here you will get the required answer we will see in the next class how you can find the stationary random process and the illustrative examples. Till then, you can simply like, share and subscribe this channel for more updates. Best of luck students. Happy luck.